Hi boys and girls, today we're going to find missing numbers and missing rules using a new strategy. First, we're gonna warm up our brains by going through a few quick look cards. So remember, these are only shown for three to five seconds. And I want you to tell me how many dots you see using some strategies and tricks um, as you look at the quick look cards. Ready, here's the first one. How many dots did you see? Here's the second quick look card. How many dots did you see? And here is the final quick look card. How many dots did you see? Here is a number story and I will read it to you in just a moment, but I want you to think of a strategy you can use to solve the problem. So I'm not going to ask you for the answer, but I want you to tell me how you would solve, which strategy you could use to solve the problem. June is three years older than Kevin. If Kevin is seven years old, how old is June? Write down a strategy that you could use to solve the problem. Here are some strategies that you may have chosen. You could draw a picture, use tally marks, count up, or even use a number model like seven plus three equals 10. We're gonna talk about a new type of strategy that you can use, and it's called using a table. And sometimes it's called a what's my rule or a function machine strategy. And I'll show you why. So this right here is a table where it says Kevin and it lists numbers all down in the column. And there's another column for June. This is called a table. What we do is we find a unit. In this case, it's years because in the number story, it says June is three years older than Kevin. And we want to know how old June is. So our unit is years. And then what, I, what I've done already is put the ages of seven, eight, nine, and so on of Kevin. And we have to figure out if June is three years older, how, what are her ages? Okay. In respect to Kevin's. So the first thing I want to do is find a rule. So if June is older, that means her number is going to be larger than Kevin's, which means I'm going to add. And since it says she's three years older, I'm going to add three to all of Kevin's ages. So if Kevin is seven and I add three years, that tells me that June is 10 years old. But when Kevin turns eight, June will turn 11. If Kevin is nine years old, add three to that and we get June's age of 12. So I can complete the rest of this table by adding three to all of these numbers. 10 plus three is 13, 15 plus three is 18, and 21 plus three is 24. So if June is, if Kevin is 21 years old, that means June will be 24 years old. So that's one way you can use a table. Let's look at another table. This is a similar type of problem. It has Raisa and Joe, and the unit again is years. So this is talking about ages. So by looking at this table, I want you to think, who is younger, Raisa or Joe? Well, I can tell Joe is five and Raisa is seven. So that means Joe is younger because his number is smaller. How many years younger is Joe? Well, seven minus five is two and eight minus six is two. And if Raisa is nine and Joe is seven, that's also going to be two years difference. So Joe is two years younger than Raisa. If Raisa is 10 years old, how old would Joe be? Well, to figure this out, I could use the rule of take away two from Raisa's age. So if she's 10, minus two would be eight. So Joe would be eight years old when Raisa is 10. 15 minus two is 13. So if Raisa is 15, that means Joe will be 13 years old. So here is a little bit of information about a function machine. This is the table right here with inputs and outputs. We call all of the numbers on the left side an input, and all of the numbers on the right side are called outputs. 
And this right here is considered a function machine. It's not really a machine, but it's kind of a way you can train your brain to think about these problems. If you put a three in the machine, the machine's job is to add the rule or to apply the rule. In this case, it's adding six to whatever number gets put into the machine. And then it pops out with the new number. So if I put a three in the machine, the machine will add six, which means a nine is going to pop out. So sometimes we know the input and sometimes we know the output. So we're gonna do some problems here and use the function machine mentality to figure out these problems. So here are several examples of function machines or tables, whatever you wanna call them. Sometimes we know all of the inputs and the rule, and we simply have to figure out what all of the outputs are. So to do this, I just have to say, okay, three plus six equals nine. Five plus six equals 11. Eight plus six equals 14. And nine plus six equals 15. So this one is fairly straightforward because we just have to give the rule or apply the rule to these input numbers. Sometimes we know all of the inputs and outputs, but what we have to do is figure out the rule. So first thing I wanna do is go, is look at the numbers and see if I can recognize whether they're getting larger or smaller. Well, if I go from six to two and 10 to six and 16 to 12, that I, I know it's getting smaller, so I know it's going to be a subtraction rule. So I know I'm subtracting, now I have to figure out how many I'm subtracting each time. Well, six minus two is four and 10 minus six is four. 16 minus 12 is four and eight minus four is four. So I know I am subtracting four on all of these numbers. So the rule is minus four. Now, sometimes they give you the rule and they only give you the outputs. So there's a trick to this. If you are given the output and you have to figure out the input, the trick is to do the opposite of the rule. So what's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. So instead of adding four to these output numbers, I'm actually going to subtract four from all of these numbers to figure out what I started with. So six minus four is two. 16 minus four is 12. 11 minus four is seven. And 10 minus four is six. So I can check my answer by going back and now applying the rule. So if I start with two and put it in the machine and I add four, is two plus four, six? Yes, it is. Is 12 plus four, 16? Yes, it is. Is seven plus four, 11? Yes. And is six plus four, 10? It definitely is. So that means I did it right. So remember, if they give you the output, you can do the opposite of the rule to figure out the input. Now, sometimes they give you a rule and they give you some inputs and some outputs. So you have to do a little bit of both, okay? So what we can do, I like to start with the inputs, but um, what we can do, remember to find the input is to do the opposite of the rule. So if my rule is minus three and they gave me a four, I can add three and that's seven, okay? Now 12 is an input, so I can do the rule. 12 minus three is nine, but seven is an output, so I have to do the opposite of the rule, plus three. Seven plus three, that means I started with 10 but now I'm back at an input, so I can minus three, which means six. All right, so remember that trick. If they give you the output, you do the opposite of the rule. And I put that hint up here on the slides for you to practice. Whenever you're given the output, you do the opposite of the rule. Okay, so here is another example. 
we're going to add 5 to all of the numbers on the input side. So 5 plus 5 is actually 10. Sorry about that. Okay. Now I need to figure out there's an output means I do the opposite. So take away 5 from 12. So 12 minus 5 is 7. And 14 minus 5 is what? 9. For 11 and 13, since they are inputs, I can apply the rule. So 11 plus 5 is? And 13 plus 5 is? Now, what do I do? If I'm given an output, how am I going to figure out what goes in? That's right. I need to do the opposite of the rule, so I need to take away 5. So 20 take away 5 is 15. Great job. Let's do another one. Okay. The rule is minus 3. So 10 minus 3 is 7. Now, if I have an 8, again, that's the output, so I need to do the opposite. 8 plus 3 is 11. 9 plus 3 is 12. Good. 13, now this is an input, so for 13 and 14, I can follow the rule. Take away 3, 10. 14, take away 3 is 11. And now I'm at the output again, which means I need to do the opposite. So 12 plus 3 is 15. Now, I do not know what the rule is. So I have to look at the input and output, the numbers where they have both, and figure out what the pattern is. So I first want to look, again, is my number getting bigger or getting smaller as I go from my in to the out? My numbers are getting bigger, which means I'm going to add. Now I have to figure out how many we are adding. Well, to get from 1 to 5, it's 4 hops in a number line. Mm -hmm. To get from 4 to 8, I add 4. So I'm going to add 4 for the rule. So 6 plus 4 is 10. 9 plus 4 is 13. And now I have two outputs, so I need to do the opposite to get the inputs. So 16 minus 4 is 12, and 19 minus 4 is 15. Let's do one more where we have to find the rule. Again, we do not know what the rule is. But we have an input and an output for the first two rows. So I'm going to look and see that my numbers are getting smaller, going from 10 to 8 and 9 to 7. So that tells me what? Right, I'm going to subtract. So if I'm subtracting 10 minus what equals 8, that's 2. And 9 to 7, there's two hops. So I must be subtracting 2 for my rule. So 6 minus 2 equals 4, and 5 minus 2 equals 3. Now I'm at my output, which means I need to do the opposite of my rule. So 2 plus 2, that means I started with 4, and 0 plus 2 means I started with 2. Great job. Okay, you're going to go to Seesaw and do some independent practice now with some function machines and using the tables to solve your problems.